Observer.com, Dave Meltzer joining us. And a uh, lot to get into, new edition of the Observer Newsletter. And obviously it's WrestleMania weekend, and the top story here is Triple H and his heart issue, which is noted here in the new Observer, now that he's got the, uh, the defibrillator inside him. I mean, all goes well, fingers crossed. He should be able to live a normal life for quite a while. Decades, it says here in the Observer. Is that right? Yeah, if all goes well, yeah, yeah. It, his the problem was if his heart it, it will stop his heart from beating irregular, um, but he does have a heart condition, so it's not like he's out of the water completely. But yeah, if he avoids uh, you know, avoids stress and eats right, which I'm sure he will do, he should do well, um, you know. But the idea of wrestling again is out of the question, though, as as he said. So. There have been rumors that he's going to be around this weekend, that we may see well, he, a public he, appearance of he is Triple around. H. He is around. He's there. But a public I'm, appearance. Um, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised to see him show up at, at you know, be introduced at Mania. You know, I mean, he was running the, uh, he was one of the people running the tryouts this week, you know, that were going on. And uh, so he's around. Yeah, he was, uh, he, the, a lot of the talent saw him for the first time yesterday. So, yeah. He's so is he, is he, I know they've used the term he's back. Obviously he's not going to be wrestling, but even, I would think that even the, the <laughs> former Triple H schedule is not a schedule that would behoove, you know, his health. So, no. so he's back presumably in like a, a, a limited capacity. Um, I don't, know. I don't really have, know the answer to that. I mean, he's been back. His, his job is now involved more in the scouting side of things you know tryouts things like that as far as like running nxt again um you know i would doubt it but i can't say that 100 percent. i mean as far as running you know this the succession plan in wwe as far as the wrestling side if, if something happens to vince you know and he was going to be the guy um i i can't imagine i mean he may try it but it probably wouldn't be uh the best for him to do that uh and, I, and he may not you know, I don't say he wouldn't be interested in doing it. I'm sure he'd be interested in doing it, but I don't know if it would be smart for him to be doing that, something like that. So, I mean, his stamina is lower, which is what he said, and and other people who've had the same condition have told me, you know, the same thing that your stamina is lower, but you can live a normal life and you can work an eight to five job, and and you know he'll do. He's working a job there already, and um, I'm sure that that I'm sure he'll keep a job there for as long as he wants to. I mean, and the thing with him is, is you know, he's got no economic issues. He can quit tomorrow. He's set. Um, but he does, you know, he loves wrestling, and I don't think he wants to walk away from it either. Dave, how does this change, uh, if at all, the the, the plan post Vince? Um, you know, could he serve more as a liaison while you know Stephanie may? back off of some of her duties that she does in the business realm and and be more of the day-to-day or is it just really well, a matter Stephanie's of not timing? Be, Stephanie's not going to be the person, you know, running creative or anything like that. Stephanie's role is going to be chief brand officer. If it forward. wasn't, then Triple H, who I guess all of us kind of assume yeah, like who, who that is person. It, right? Yeah, honestly, like who who in the world really is it? Nick Khan! <laughs> well, <laughs> stop it. it. He works it, better with Steph. It, it definitely won't be Nick on um, <laughs> Shawn Michaels, Adam Pierce. I mean, we start asking questions like that on who, it's who's a, there it's, to, to. It's a, it's it's a tough one. Um, you know, right now, right now, Paul Heyman, Bruce, which would be bizarre. <laughs> right now, right now, it would be Bruce Pritchard. Paul Heyman would be difficult, but not impossible. But yeah, as far as grooming people, you know, the whole thing is they groomed Paul Levesque. And, you know, that wouldn't be a good fit right now. And Paul Levesque lost a lot of points with the NX, with the NXT AEW fight anyway. Um, so, um, but they it's not like that there's this replacement right there waiting. Um, I can't see and Sean. And even Bruce Pritchard. I mean, this guy's in his 60s. Yeah. Bruce, well. and, and he's had, and Bruce has had multiple heart attacks. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't see Sean as being the person for that role. Um you know, plus the plus, I don't, I don't know that Sean wants to devote. You know, because that, that is, is the that's person there stress. right now inside the company. Is there a person there? Would they dare look outside a company that's always been so close but, like that? Would they dare look outside? Um, you know, then the the problem is is that wrestling hasn't created guys like that that have that, and um, they haven't trained guys like that. But I would think that it would be someone. 
Um, you know, we could look at the agent staff or whatever, but I think it would be someone. I don't think they would look outside because, because you know, as, as you know, they don't consider experience outside to be meaningful because if it's not in WWE, it doesn't count. So I don't think that they would. I mean, you know, would it, you know, like if Eric Bischoff hadn't so spectacularly flopped the last time, it, it could have been him easily because that's what they would look for, someone who has experience in that. And you got Eric Bischoff or Jerry Jarrett, and Jerry will be, you know, Jerry's older than Vince. So, um, you know, and, and I, I can't see in a second him taking on a 20-hour-a-day job. Um, Bruce it wouldn't be good for, but um, it could be. It could end up with him. I mean, well, Dave, um, I, I, there's, not, I there's wonder... not a lot of guys. There's not a long list of guys, put it that way. I was, you know, I was wondering to myself, you know, Hunter was such a, a avid bodybuilder. You know, this whole change, obviously, you know, you, you have your life threatened. You know, you're going to probably think differently. But he's such a competitive guy. The thought of him working an eight to five job is just something that always it's tough for me to actually believe like him sitting at a desk and doing that. Is there a way, I guess, always depending on where he's at physically that you could have. And I know this is going to harken back to a dreaded time with booking committees. But could you have the writers and have have Bruce and bring back a Gabe and have people where he could be at the end, the person to either rubber stamp something or make tweaks and changes, or is he too competitive to be able to sit by and let them do something and then him not give it his all Vince like to say, no, this is what I would do. And, and to change things, you know what I mean? Could he actually back mean. off and be that person just to go, okay, let's do a check mark on what, what the booker is doing. That's a really good question, I, and I don't have a good answer to it because the one thing is, is as he gets more and more comfortable and further away, he is going to slowly revert back to being the person he was before unless he catches himself and goes, no, I will not do this. So I could see if he has no, let's say he has no um, you know, bad escapades in the next year, slowly would he revert back to that, especially if something happens to Vince. Um, but it wouldn't, it, it's probably not advisable, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, but you know, it depends on, you know, a couple of things. Number one, you know, um, I think the ages of his kids, like if it's in 10 years, it's a lot different than if it was now. Um, and I think, uh, the other thing is, is what, what his outlook on life itself is as you get older, you get very, very, very different outlooks on life and, and. Um, you know, some people, as they get older, the wrestling becomes less important, even for the ones who are immersed in it. I mean, I know people who were immersed, immersed, immersed in wrestling. And now when they're, you know, in their 60s, put it this way, they don't even care about it. So, you know, in 10 years, will he be that person or will he be or does, does wrestling completely define him as a person? And if it does, you know, which is like, like, say, a Ric Flair, which is a bad example, but a good example in, in, in what I'm saying, in the sense that. There's no other way, and he's going to want to keep doing it no matter what, even at the expense of of risking his health. And I don't, I don't know. I don't. I think I know he's a smart guy. I know that personally. He's a smart guy, but where his mind will be, in and 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 body will be in ten years. It's it's a we we don't have those answers. Anything new with the WrestleMania coming up tomorrow? I mean, nothing really. I mean, it's it's here and. Uh, I'm I'm really intrigued on how they're gonna. You know what I'm intrigued by this year more than it more than almost any other year is news outlets afterwards like acting like that there's 180 thousand people at the two shows. You know what I mean? Because it's like I I presume that they're going to exaggerate the number the most in history and and it will be an obvious exaggeration. But I think that you know I've I've already seen like you know people talking about 100 thousand people at, at both nights and it's just like. Dude, they're, they're barely at half that sold right now. You're telling me that they're below 55,000 sold? <laughs> uh, they are below 55,000 sold. They probably uh -huh. will. They will probably, <laughs> they will probably end up a little bit above that, but that's 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 going to be where they're going to end up, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? This, this, for them, this, though, is going to end up trying to come across in the mainstream. This is probably going to be their most successful WrestleMania of all time because of all these celebrities and the way that they are going to pitch this. All of us wrestling fans are looking at this going, this is the worst-built WrestleMania of all time. Oh, I, I don't think that. 
I, I think I think that they've done a great job with. Yeah, with I don't Lesnar think it's a horribly Reigns. built WrestleMania. No, I think I, it's I think been that... one of the softest. I mean, for sure. I think it's been one of the more lackluster. Even though we've had some really cool things, I mean, well, I, 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 think think been, generally... I think it's been. Strong. I, I actually think it's been stronger than the last couple of years. Um, certainly the hmm. last two or three. I think the last two or three weren't good at all. Didn't have good builds at all. Going back six, seven years, yeah, there's there have been stronger ones then, but. I mean, this is one of the strongest built main events they've had. But as far as the rest of the show, it feels, um, yeah, I, 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 I don't. It's made I don't for the main street. It's made for Sports Center. That's what it feels like. Um, well, that's their. That's what their. That's Nick Khan. That's what their business is, is is now. Their business is made for the aura of WWE and selling that to people, just like the freaking Peacock deal. It's not about what numbers you're doing. It's about the the idea of you have WWE and we're a major brand like NASCAR, and uh, you know we can make deals. And that's what WWE is about: is keeping that name and that keeping that name in the forefront. And in that sense. Um, they're going to get a lot of publicity coming out of this, you know, um, uh, and some of it's the celebrities. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, that's that's what they're there for. So I think last year or when when did they do uh, uh, an extra 20,000 above the actual number? Uh, they did 21,000 above the actual number in the last time they were in Dallas. And okay. I presume that this year they will exaggerate that number far more than 20. Well, when you 000. have one night, you exaggerate 20. So you don't add the two nights together and add 20. You add 20 the first night and 20 the second night, so you're going to add 40. They're going to say that there's 160,000 people both nights. That's what they're going to say. Oh. <laughs> It'll be interesting, yeah. How about that? Well, Dave, I want to thank you so much for doing the show here today. The new Observer's out, everybody. You can grab it at WrestlingObserver.com. Your subscription gets you not only the weekly Observer, but our whole Observer archive. And, of course, the paper copies, P.O. Box 1228, Campbell, California, 95009. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Rob Bartlett is the man. He tried the best he can. Vince on the new What Rob Bartlett's going to do to you. Vinny, be happy, Corbin, and Bartlett in a three-way. Oh. Here comes the commentator, Rob Bartlett. He's a great imitator of Vince McMahon. Rob, you're the love of my life. Come back to Monday Night Raw and be my wife. <laughs> what? Oh, wow. Is this Rob Bartlett? Guilty as ch- Hey, oh, look who's here on the show, everybody. There's a star here. Rob, hey, Rob Bartlett is joining us here today. How you doing, Rob? I don't know what to say about this. To actually be proposed to in song was a beautiful thing. <laughs> I couldn't really do much of an impression of him other than the, the tone of the voice, you know. <laughs> He still got it. <laughs> he still got it. I think I had the wrong guy. Well, what, what did you learn about the the Rob Bartlett that you you uh, you checked out? He was an explorer way back when. That's not him. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He was born August fifteenth, eighteen seventy five. And uh, died you, April 28th, 1946. He died in, okay, but you thought he might be on the show this week. Well, I couldn't figure out why you guys picked him. You're going to go to the Brian and Vinnie Matt Cleary Memorial Hall of Awesome. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Hey. Aye. Well, there he goes. Very aye. prestigious. You get nothing. You've warmed the cockles of my heart. I have warm cockles now. And um, Lucky fella. I'm... Uh, I'm I'm moist. I'll just say that. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm moist. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.